What is up everyone, Movie Way and back again with another collection video. Now today is going to be another <laughs> video game collection. I don't really do much of these on the channel but I just like to throw them in every now and again. This channel will remain 99% movie related but I might just throw the odd video game related content in there now and again because I've got a decent sized video game collection and I thought why not just show off some of the collections that I have like I've done my PlayStation 4 collection, the Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PlayStation 3. So if you want to check any of them out, they will be down below. But today I'm going to be talking about my joint favourite console alongside the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 2. Now, uh, this is not the biggest collection out there. that You can find way bigger ones on YouTube, but it's a decent sized one enough. I did used to have way more games than this. But my advice to anyone who owns any sort of collection is don't lend any games or movies out to anyone because you hardly ever get them back. So I did own way more than this. I'll, there's a certain franchise in there which I'll speak about where I used to have way more in the franchise and I'll get to that in about the middle of the video. But let's just kick off with it. Now there is some games here that I have not played because sometimes I just pick these up for cheap. Um, because PlayStation 2 games do go kind of cheap now and I'm really wanting to set a retro corner up in this room and get the PlayStation 2 plugged in and the PlayStation and you know all the, the Wii and stuff like that I just want to get them plugged into my CTR TV which I still don't own but I do plan to make a little corner a retro gaming corner in this movie room so without further ado here we go now it's going to be a great start to the video because I have not played this game <laughs> <laughs> and that is 24 the game now i am a massive fan of this show it's probably one of if not my favorite tv shows of all time little spoiler there for a video i have planned on my top 10 tv shows but i picked this up really cheap i was going to grab it at the time and i don't know why i never to be honest but sorry i still do have the price on some of these i, I would this is going to be one of the first games that i play when i set that up because I'm really intrigued about it actually. I've heard it's quite good. Short lived, I've heard, but I love Jack Bauer, you know, one of my favourite characters of all time. And I would love to see what happens in this game and how it plays out, but I just haven't got there yet. But like I said, I've heard good things about it. Next up, I'm afraid, is another one that I have not played, but we will get to some in a minute that I have played, don't worry. This is another one I picked up really cheap, and that was Batman Rise of Sinzu, I think. Uh, I can't remember if I've heard this is an absolutely terrible game or a good one. I get mixed up there. Can't quite remember now. But anything Batman related and I see it for really cheap, I'll probably just pick it up. But I just haven't got to, to this one yet, I'm afraid. Let me know in the comments if it's any good. I will reply to everyone. Next up is a game I played a little bit of back in the day and I just couldn't connect with it. I mainly bought it because I thought it was going to be controversial and stuff. I heard a few people... In gaming magazines and stuff saying oh this one might be a no one might be happy with this because of the content and that is bmx triple x but i don't really remember anything being bad in this i think there was one character on a bikini and that's about the you know the most out there thing you got but i did only play bits of this i thought it was all enjoyable but it had some awkward controls at times um bit of a mediocre game really and I was a fan of the elite sports games back in the day, as you'll see later on. But this one, from what I remember, wasn't the best. It was just okay. Ooh, nearly dropped that then. Next up is Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. I have only played this on the PC, I believe. And it wasn't quite up to scratch for like Medal of Honor and stuff. But it was okay. Decent little shooter. Not unspectacular. I mean, we've had so many of these games, haven't we? You know, these World War II type shooters. And I think I just got overloaded with them in the past. Now, I did have this on PC, like I said, that's where I mainly played it. But I think I seen this for really cheap and picked it up for the PlayStation 2 because I don't PC game anymore. So, from my memory of it, it was good enough to grab again. But eh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Next up is one of the first PlayStation 2 games I ever got. In fact, it was the first PlayStation 2 game I ever got, along with another one I'll show in a minute. Now, this... Christmas was the best Christmas present I ever got because I got me PlayStation 2, this game, and another one which I'll show in a minute. But that is Burnout. Now, um, 
I remember I got a DVD player as well, and my dad got me like Gone in 60 Seconds and stuff on DVD, and a few other car things. I was just into cars at the time, and I asked for burnout. And this was really, really fast paced. I remember just smoking it down the motorway at the time. And it was like, sorry, I just had an itch there. It had, um, it was really fast paced, heart in your mouth stuff, really. But I remember getting very repetitive really quickly. The courses just seemed very seamy and stuff. But it was okay. It was more like a demo racing game, this to me. I mean, it wasn't a fully fledged arcade racer. Uh, I just remember it having very little time with it. But from what I played, I did enjoy it. I thought it kind of got really hard as the game went on early on there. Next up is Burnout Revenge. I picked this up for very cheap to complete my Burnout collection, really. And I haven't played much of this one, to be honest. I can't quite remember too much about it. I've heard it's a really good Burnout game, but I just can't remember. I think I played like five minutes of it. But like I said, when I get that PlayStation set up, I'm really going to go through some of these again. Really looking forward to having a bit of nostalgia there. Next up is probably the best racing game I've ever played. If not, it's definitely one of them. And this is Burnout Takedown. Now, I did own this for the Xbox, what, the original Xbox as well, which is where I mostly played it. However, I got rid of that and all the games, and I wish I hadn't, but I rebought it on the PlayStation 2. I love the crash sequences in this, all these set pieces that you can go on, and it just felt amazing to play. It really, really did. You know, they had races, they had time trials, but like I said, they had the more points for the biggest crashes and stuff and it just worked so well i know they've remade burnout paradise for the playstation 4 and stuff but they need to bring this one out now this is such an amazing and amazing car game so yeah it's one of my top 10 playstation 2 games if you like i just think it's brilliant next up is a game i bought for really cheap again just to see what it was like and that is charlie and the chocolate factory i don't know why i just Sometimes when I see movie-based games, I just have to buy them to see what they're like. But like I said, I haven't played this one yet, and I don't even think I've seen the film. I've seen Willy Wonka from the Chocolate Factory, but I haven't seen the film. I've seen bits of it, and it, I, it wasn't a fan, really. I'm not a big Tim Burton fan anyway, but I just bought this to see what it was like. Curiosity got the better of me. Next up is Conflict Desert Storm. I don't remember much of this one either. In fact, there is three games here that I don't remember much of. And it's all the Conflict games. So we got Conflict Desert Storm, Conflict Vietnam, and Conflict Global Storm. Now, I do promise there is going to be some games coming up that I've played a lot of. But these ones, I just can't remember too much about them, to be honest. I think I played them at a friend's house for like five or ten minutes or something like that and I couldn't really get into them and I've just seen them out in the wild and grabbed them but not a franchise that I'm too big on or familiar with I'm not gonna lie to you next up is Crash Bandicoot the Wrath of P Cortex in a very ugly platinum box there I remember liking this but it just didn't have the magic of Crash Bandicoot 1, 2 and 3 Um, but it was a decent little spin-off side game but I think I was just yeah, it just wasn't it just wasn't up there with them three games for me, but it was okay, you know. I, I I didn't complete the game or anything. I got about two hours in, something like that. But yeah, it was just a, a decent crash game really. Nothing too spectacular. Next up is one of the best games on the PlayStation 2, in my opinion, and that is Devil May Cry. I had no interest in this game whatsoever. My friend Sean, when I was in school, said it's meant to be amazing, I'm going to get it. And I thought, you know what, he was my best friend. And I thought, I'm just going to get it as well then. Because if Sean says it's good, it must be good. Wow, I was blown away by this. I absolutely loved this game. It was amazing. I just loved the combat and smashing stuff up. And when the sword and stuff and these guns connect with the enemies, it just felt so good to play. Oh, I love Devil May Cry. It's such a good game. I finished this about five or six times. It was just a brilliant game and one that I didn't expect to like, like because of the whole gothic parts of it and stuff I wasn't really into all that at the time but wow what a fantastic game I really need to play Devil May Cry 5 I've heard that's really really good next up is a game that's I think divides opinion a lot of people don't like this game but I don't know why and that is Enter the Matrix I think it's a really really good game I was badly into the Matrix back in when I was in school I loved the films in 1999 and stuff 
and I loved the slow motion set pieces in this, you know, where you could just, I think it was the click of a button and you could just slow everything down. It felt great to play, great combat and stuff. The only thing that felt weird, I think these two characters were killed off really easily <laughs> in the Matrix movies, which kind of felt weird playing them. Um, but a good game, I really enjoyed Enter the Matrix, thought it was great. Next up is a, one of the first games I bought on the PlayStation 2, and the only reason I bought this is because of the character and what he was wearing. Now I'll try and zoom in for you there, but basically you can see as a resemblance for Chucky from Child's Play, <laughs> and that is the only reason I bought this game. So I read the back as well and got when I got home it said like 70 levels and stuff, and I was like, whoa, it must be a big game, but oh, it, it just slowed down for me really quickly. I couldn't get into it. It didn't feel good to play. It was just an all over the place platformer, really. Um, so I couldn't really get into this one. I'm not gonna lie. I should have listened to PlayStation Magazine, who give it a five out of ten. Um, but it wasn't great. Next up is just a simple FIFA Football 2004 game. Let's be honest. The play the football games to go with on the PlayStation Two were Pro Evolution Soccer, not FIFA. I know it's FIFA nowadays mainly. Um, but I remember this not being a patch on Pro Evolution Soccer, so I didn't really play much of that, to be honest. Next up is Final Fantasy X, a fantastic RPG game. One of the best Final Fantasy games, in my opinion. I really had a good time with this. The only thing that annoyed me is I got to the end and didn't level up enough, and I could never, ever defeat the final boss. And I don't think, from what I remember, there was any way of going back either to level up which really really annoyed me because i had such a good time with this the story is great the characters are great the combat is amazing it's like turn based like the way i like it although i did love the final fantasy 7 remake combat um i just really had a good time with this and it's just a shame i never finished it maybe one day i'll go back i do own it on the playstation 4 remastered and stuff so maybe i'll go back to it one day but a great game and one of the best series out there Next up is one of the most underrated games on the PlayStation 2, although it does get a lot of attention these days, and that is Freedom Fighters. Now, I think my dad got me Pro Evolution Soccer 3 or something, which I don't own anymore, I don't think, because hey-ho, I lent it out. Um, and I, he got me this as well. I think he, if you bought a game, you got this other one for half price, and he just I just said, pick me one. And he got to come on with this, and I remember really enjoying this game. It was... I think these terrorists are trying to take over the city and you have to get a gang of civilians together and fight back and it was so good. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one. You know, one of the most underrated gems on the PlayStation 2, really. I, If you're still playing PlayStation 2 these days and stuff, I highly recommend this, but I, I do remember a few of my friends really liking this as well. So if you're watching this video, maybe you'll have a little bit of nostalgia there with Freedom Fighters, me picking that up there. Next up is one I picked up not long ago actually and i haven't played it yet but i'm a big fan of the show and that is futurama but i thought this game looking at the back and stuff looked like a really fun game to play um like i said i love futurama the show i think it's really funny and i would like to play this game at some point i've heard it's not great by some people but sometimes when people say games aren't great i enjoy them even more it's just the way i am i mean i don't intend to but i always lower my expectations and then feel like it, i come out better because i've lowered my expectations but i think this will be a fun little game to play just haven't got around to that one yet i'm afraid next up is the getaway this was going to be london's answer to grand theft auto at the time i remember looking at the images in playstation uk magazine and just thinking this looks like the greatest looking game ever and to be fair it is it has got very good graphics it really has but it's not a open world game like gta really this is more of a mission-based game, but you know what? I loved it. I thought this was a great game. I loved each level, going after this guy who's kidnapped your son, basically. Just a really, really great game. A great story. All takes place in London. Gives you, like, the lock, stock, snatch type of feel. And the last mission was really surprising, actually. You know, it's like a time limit to get off this boat that's going to blow up. I thought it was really fun. I really enjoyed the getaway. Very realistic gangster game. Next up is the Getaway Black Monday. Now, this was really good as well. I remember not being able to finish this game. I think I got two, uh, like three quarters of the way through. And there was one where you had to sneak into this bank or this police station. I just couldn't do it. 
Um, but you play lots of different characters in this one. One of them is a hacker, one of them is a cop, I believe, and one is like a gangster from the last game. It's a really good game. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I do prefer the first one, just story-wise, but this was really good. Just wish I would have finished it back in the day, really. Next up, and this is a game I haven't got to yet, and I do own the remasters on the PlayStation 3. Which I'll probably play instead of this one, but that is God of War. Now, I have played God of War on the PlayStation 4, and I love it to death. It's one of the best games I've ever played. But I just haven't got round to these first three yet. I've heard the third one's really good as well, but yeah, I, I just haven't got round to it, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Next up is the other game that I got, along with Burnout, when it was my favourite, uh, what do you call it, present of uh, ever at Christmas. There's a little weird mark on this. It looks like something, but it's not. <laughs> and that is Grand Theft Auto 3. Wow, what a game this was. I remember the official PlayStation magazine gave this an 8 out of 10. And then a few years later, they went back and said, did we really give that game an 8? Because it definitely deserved at least a 9. Um, what a game this is. Brilliant, brilliant game. I'd never played anything like it before. This big open world sandbox where I just had the ability to do what I want. I could just go around shooting people and <laughs> crashing cars. and It was just like nothing I played before. And the story was great too. Now this is very small in comparison to the GTAs we have today. But at the time, it seemed like the biggest map in the world <laughs> that I had the biggest game I'd ever played, and I just loved it. The character doesn't really talk in this, the main character, but that just brings a bit of mystery to him, and I, I think this game is brilliant. So GTA 3, definitely one of the best games ever. This one is my favourite Grand Theft Auto out of every Grand Theft Auto I've played, and I've played them all. And that is Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Wow. This, <laughs> you know... I knew they were going to step it up a bit because you used to see images of the characters on bikes and boats and I just couldn't wait for it. I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. But I didn't expect to be as blown away as I was. I mean, it just took everything GTA 3 had and expanded on it in every single way. The What I loved about this most is when you buy properties and you get extra little side missions and then you can... Once you do them, you get more money for the properties, but the missions were so well thought out, so creative. I loved this game. It was so good. It, a 10 out of 10 absolute masterpiece. And if you want me to pick my top three games of all time, this is in it. That's how good it is. So what a fantastic, amazingly good game. Now, everyone might say this one's the best, and fair enough. This one's probably even bigger, and that is San Andreas. I just prefer the style and the theme of Vice City a little bit more than this. Um, but this is still a great game. You know, it takes place in the 90s, in the hood and stuff. Kind of like Boys in the Hood, Menace of Society, you know, that type of game. And it really did work. They captured all that so well. Uh, I loved CJ as a character, and the fact that you can make him go on a diet or, you know, go fat and stuff. It was really fun. Uh, it seemed to last forever, this game. There were so many missions. I loved the way you could go into casinos, the desert. Who remembers everyone bringing them rumours out about Bigfoot being in the woods? <laughs> Another 10 out of 10 game, really. I mean, it's very hard to fault this game in any way whatsoever. I just think Vice City edges it a tiny bit. But, brilliant. I mean, I don't think I've quite had the feeling from GTA like I did with them games. Them three games there. With GTA 4, GTA 5, although GTA 5 did bring it back a little bit. But I just don't think I've had the quite the magical feeling like I did with them. But I still love GTA 4 and 5. Next up is Gran Turismo 4. I played a little bit of this back in the day. I thought it looked really good because of the, the graphics and stuff. And at the time, the graphics were great. But I was more into me arcade racers. And I remember my PlayStation 2 broke. So I bought a new PS2 and this is the game I got with it. It was good enough, it was quite big for a car game and stuff, but it just didn't quite have the feeling for me. I really did prefer like the likes of Burnout and stuff, but it was, it, no, there's no denying it's a great game. But that is Gran Turismo 4. I hope they bring Gran Turismo back in a good way on the PlayStation 5. I know there's a new one on the horizon, I hope they get it right. Next up is Half-Life, considered one of the best games ever made on the, on the PC. I really had a fun time with this, and I was halfway through the game, and I got stuck in this little... 
bitch and saved the game and I could not get out of it. It was like glitch, so I gave up. Which is a shame, really, because I thought this had a lot of good story elements and a lot of good shooting gameplay and stuff. Never played Half-Life 2 of it. It's a brilliant game, but yeah, I, I did enjoy Half-Life. It's just a shame I got stuck and I just didn't have the energy to go back to the start and start it all over again. I mean, things like that don't really happen in games today, do they? But there you go. I think the last time anything like that happened to me was in on Assassin's Creed on the Xbox 360 where I saved it in a dream sequence and couldn't get out of it. Next up is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I've heard this is actually the best Harry Potter game out the lot. But I just picked this up for cheap not long ago and I haven't played it yet. But I did pick it up because I heard it was the best one. And I've heard it's a bit like GTA and Hogwarts. I don't know how true that is, but... I'm looking forward to the new one that they're going to bring out that looks like there's a Harry Potter RPG coming to this generation. You know, the PS5 and stuff, which will, which will be great. Next up is Hyper Street Fighter 2. I'm a big Street Fighter 2 fan, and when this comes to PlayStation 2, I grabbed it straight away. And, um, yeah, it, it didn't have quite the feeling of the SNES version, maybe because gaming had moved on and stuff. But I had to have it. I just had to have it for the PlayStation 2. I didn't play it much because I just felt like all my gaming days of Street Fighter 2 were on the SNES. But, yeah, Street Fighter 2 is in my top 10 games of all time, easily. Next up is International Cue Ball. does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a decent pool game. <laughs> Next up is Juiced, another arcade racer that I picked up really cheap and... I don't remember loving it too much. It was okay, but nothing special, to be honest. Uh, I was definitely just addicted to burnout. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that not too much thoughts with juice. Okay, here we go. Next up, we do have Killzone. Now, I remember the PlayStation magazine. I've mentioned that a few times today, but I used to read it constantly. We're hyping this game up to death because it was a big exclusive and rightly so, you know, they're excited about a big exclusive coming to the PlayStation. And I picked it up day one because of the hype. Uh, I really enjoyed this, you know, there was some frame rate issues. But I still had a good time with this. It was a really, really good shooter, solid enough and quite dark in tone and stuff. It was just the frame rate issues that were annoying me. I mean, back in the day, you couldn't really patch games, so it stayed like that forever. But still a solid, solid shooter. Next up is Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Um, yeah, I I think this is the one where you... Actually, yeah, I can't quite remember too much about this one, actually, because there was another one I played. I might be getting mixed up with the next one I'm going to show. I don't think I played this one as much, to be honest. I don't want to say too much in case I mix it up. I know a lot of people did like this game. But this is the one I used to play more than anything. That is Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. I constantly try to get past this level where Gandalf is on the wall and you've got to stop the orcs climbing up. And I could not do it. I just couldn't do it. Um, but I tried so many times because I loved the game that much and I wanted to progress. But this is such a fun game. You know, I, I love linear games like this where you just... Have a level, go to the next level, go to the next level. And you go on different paths. I think Frodo is one of them, Aragorn and Legolas. I'm not quite sure, but there's three characters and you go on different paths. And it's really good to, to play. You know, I, I loved it at the time. And it was mind-blowing to see the movie go into the game, if you like. So it's a movie trailer that blends into the gameplay, which was really good at the time. I mean, I know you probably see that all the time these days, but... Next up is probably the most controversial game, or one of the most controversial games ever made from Rockstar, and that is Manhunt. Now, I had to buy this on a whim. Basically, I loved the way this game looked. I, You know, back then, we didn't have the internet. I had to use magazines. And I was just looking at these images going, wow, this game looks right, right up my street because I was a big horror fan and stuff. And it was saying that it's going to be brutal and stuff like that. And when it came out, there was no reviews because... <laughs> The new magazines weren't coming out for another week or so, but I wanted it so much and I thought, I'm just going to take a risk here. This might be terrible, but I'm going to buy it. And wow, this game was fantastic. <laughs> the stealth here, the violence, all just worked. I mean, you were behind someone and the longer you pressed the button to kill them and waited, the more gorier the death and you get more points at the end of the level. 
Yeah, so basically you're playing this character who's been cheated from death row. The, this fella has saved your life and he wants you to go around killing people so he can make a snuff film, basically. But it's a really, really good game. Um, I completed it many times and it's quite scary at times. There's just like human pig running around after you at some point with a chainsaw and stuff. But I had such a good time with Manhunt. I'd like to download that again on the PlayStation 4. Next up is Max Payne, another game a bit like Enter the Matrix where you can slow time down and this was so good, it really really was. Great story, you know, at the time it was kind of mind blowing that you could slow time down and stuff. I played this mainly on the PC but I was, I'm was i glad to have it on the PlayStation 2 as well. Um, bit of a tragic story involving Max and his wife and stuff like that and it's like a revenge type game. I remember there was this one level that me and my friends in work just could not get past for about two weeks and I I felt like the clever kid in the class because I figured it out. You had to sniper <laughs> these lorry tyres or something that were in the distance and everyone was just so happy that I figured it out. Like I said, no internet back then, so Max Payne, great game. Next up is Max Payne 2. I have not played this one. I've heard it's more of a noir story or noir story type game but i just haven't played this one i don't know why i don't know why i never played this film yeah next up is medal of honor frontline one of the best games on the playstation 2 and another familiar feeling where i think i got to level 9 and i just got killed right at the end every single time of this level and i tried so many times to do it and i just couldn't but so many great levels on this like the d-day landing and stuff one of my favorite shooters of all time um, much better than Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30, I thought. This was just great. I loved everything about this. It was one of my favourite shooters on the PS2 and still is one of my favourite shooters today. So, yeah. Next up is Medal of Honor Rise and Sun. I don't think this was as good as Frontline, but it was still a decent game. Um, just didn't have the, good, the same feeling that Frontline gave me, really. And it was a much, you know, even though I didn't complete Frontline, getting to level 9 seemed longer than this whole game. So, yeah, I don't think it was a very long one. Yeah, I think they just tried to cash in on that front line there and get it quickly out for the next year, which was the next Christmas, basically. Next up is Mercenaries. I've only played a little bit of this, not much of it. Uh, it was kind of fun, you know, just blowing stuff up and stuff like that, but I don't remember too much about it, to be honest. Um, Just haven't played too much of it, so... Next up is Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. I remember being so angry at this game when it came out because you didn't play as Solid Snake for the majority of it. You were this riding character. But as time's gone on, I've really grown to appreciate this. I, you know, I applaud Kojima for going in a little bit of a different direction there. And you are Solid Snake at the start, but then you are this riding character. And there's so many great boss fights in this, like the guy on the rollerblades who's got the bomb. And... You don't know where the bomb is when you've defeated him and he's actually lying on top of it. Typical Kojima, you know, bringing every single gameplay element into all these boss fights. Really good game. I highly enjoy Metal Gear Solid 2. Next, next up, though, is probably a better one. That is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, where you are Snake trying to survive in the jungle. Uh, so many good moments in this game. And people consider this to be the greatest game of all time. I actually think Metal Gear Solid 1 is the best, but this is probably the next best one. Uh, yeah, it takes place in the 60s and stuff. The big fight at the end with Boss and the ending is really impactful, really emotional. But when you, really, you have to find all this stuff in the jungle to eat, these snakes and stuff, and some of them are poisonous, you have to be careful. The Boss fight with the sniper rifle, the old guy... Wow, that was some intense... <laughs> it took like an hour and a half to beat him and stuff. But the boss fights are really where Metal Gear Solid shines, and there's so many good ones in this. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater is amazing. Stupid title for a game, but... <laughs> Next up is Minority Report, another one I just picked up when I seen it. Going for really cheap. I've only just recently watched the film last year, to be honest. Um... I haven't played this one. I have not played it. But like I said, it's a movie tying game, so I picked it up. Next up is Need for Speed Underground. I did have Need for Speed Underground 2, which is the better game. But yeah, lent that one out as well. But I loved this game at the time. It was so good, especially when you got the Nissan Skyline, which was my favourite car back then. I used to love it because some guy, who, some fella who lived down the road from me had a Nissan Skyline. 
and he let me look inside it one day and sit in it. It was, oh, it was amazing. And I don't really, I'm not really that big into cars. I mean, I went through a little phase, but I always loved listening on Skylines, and that was the big car in this game. This was so fast, like Burnout, Need for Speed, Underground, and Burnout were my two go-to racing games. Really, I really had a good time with this. I loved the way you can do the cars up with the vinyls and stuff. So yeah, Need for Speed, Underground, a classic. Next up is Prisoner of War. I've heard this is actually okay, but I just, again, haven't played it, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry about that. Now, next up is the franchise I was talking about where you should not lend games out because I own the first one here. Yeah, just the first one. Because I had two, three, four, five, and six and never seen them again. And that is Pro Evolution Soccer. Easily the greatest football game series of all time. I know FIFA is great now, but at the time, nothing felt as good as Pro Evolution Soccer. It just didn't. Me and my friends used to have couch co-op all the time or play against each other. Winner stays on. My friend Jamie, who might be watching this video, was the best Pro Evolution Soccer player ever. And one night we all went to his house. You know, just like 10 of us. <laughs> and... No one could get him off it, <laughs> so he'd be made up giving me a shit with me giving him a shout out there. But Pro Evolution Soccer, the best football game series ever for the time. It it was just brilliant. I'm just gonna get some more of the, this pile over here. Sorry about that. Okay, so next up we have one of the first PlayStation Two games out there, um, when the console released, and that is Red Faction. I remember having a good time with this. I think it's all play, takes place on Mars and stuff. Decent little shooter. But my memory is very, very vague. I never completed the game or anything. But it was okay. Decent game, you know. Next up is another movie tie-in game. I had to grab this. I haven't played it. But it's one of my favourite films ever. And late on in the PlayStation 2's life, they started making a lot of these. You know, with classic games. I think there was a Fight Club game at one point And a Taxi Driver game. But I had to pick this up. But that is Reservoir Dogs. I've heard this is one of the better ones. And this will be the first game I actually play when I set that PlayStation 2 up because I'm so intrigued to see about this. And you actually go into the heist and stuff, I believe, that you don't see in the film. So, yeah, this will be the first one I do play just to see what it's like. Next up is... In... I recently had this in my top 10 games of all time, but it would probably be 11th now because The Last of Us has took over it. That is Resident Evil 4. I'm a big Resident Evil fan. I do think this is probably the best one. Um, oh, this is so good to play back then. It really, really was. I remember the GameCube got it first. And I was so jealous. And when it comes to PlayStation 2, I snapped it up in a heartbeat. It just brought so many different gameplay elements to what we're used to. You know, in Resident Evil, you have to stand there and point your gun. In this one, you could move at the same time. It was all over the shoulder camera. And it just turned the franchise upside down for the better. Such a good game. You know, I loved taking over as Leon. There were so many scary moments with the guy with the chainsaw with the bag on his head and stuff. Fantastic, amazing. Sorry, I keep saying the word fantastic. I really do apologise. <laughs> um, but Resident Evil 4, one of the best games ever made. And to me, the best Resident Evil game. Next up is Resident Evil Code Veronica X. I only played about three hours of this. I think it's all in a experimental research facility, I think, or a lab or something. Can't quite remember. A lot of people do consider this one of the best Resident Evil games as well, but I thought it was a little bit hard for me back in the day. I Sometimes I used to give up easily on hard games. I don't know more, but back then I used to. Um, but... From what I remember, it was good. It had great graphics for the time as well. Next up is Ridge Racer 5. I can't quite remember anything about this, to be honest. I think someone gave me this in work. They were getting rid of a few of the games, and this was one of them. And I don't think I ever played it, in all honesty. Sorry about that. My favourite Ridge Racer game is actually the PSP one, because it was the first game I got, and I was addicted to it. Next up is Rocky. A seriously good boxing game, actually. Um... This was really good to play. It really felt, you know, the gameplay and stuff. It just felt good to play as a boxing game. And I'm a big fan of the Rocky movies. So I love this. Um, it'd be good if you could do the story mode as like Clubber and stuff. And Ivan Drago, which I think you could in the next one. But yeah, I mean, 
it was just a good game, a good boxing game, and good to play with your friends as well against each other. And there was all these little training bits in between where you could build your stamina up and stuff. And I thought it was really fun. Some of them were hard to master. They were like mini games, but I really enjoyed Rocky. One of the best boxing games I've ever played, to be honest. And next up is Rocky Legends. Now, the only thing that didn't do this for me is it felt exactly the same as the other Rocky game. And like I said, I think you can go Club of Lang and stuff and Ivan Drago and do a little, you know career with them but it just felt too much the same as that rocky game for me and i thought as soon as i played it i thought i've seen all this before so yeah next up is shadow man 2 second coming i don't think i've ever played this game to be honest i think this was given to me as well by a friend because he was getting rid of his games like ridge racer 5 it might have been the same friend actually i don't think i've ever played this one i'm afraid Next up, The Simpsons Skateboarding, just not a patch on Tony Hawk. Bit of a bad game, really. I, I, I give up with this straight away. I, I do love The Simpsons, but this, for me, just wasn't working at all. It just was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is The Sims. Now, I thought this was going to be exactly like the PC version, so I grabbed it, and it wasn't. It's more of a level game, you know, where you're going through someone's life, and you don't really do... I mean, you can buy stuff and stuff, but this is definitely more of a story-based game. It's not like where you build your own house and stuff like the PC. It's totally different, really. I had fun with it, but it was very short-lived. It was more of a cash grab, this game. But it was fun, just over very, very quickly. Next up is Smash Core Tennis Pro Tournament. Wow, I was addicted to this game back in the day. Me and my dad used to have a little tennis matches with it. It felt like the best tennis game ever at the time. Um, I would love to get in, back into a tennis game. I might get the Mario Tennis for the Switch or something. Um, but I really enjoyed this back in the day. It was such a good feel. felt great to play. It really did. Next up is Spider-Man. I had so much fun with this. I thought it was one of the best movie tying games. Um, Spider-Man 2 was really good on the Xbox, on the original Xbox I own that for, not this. But I had so much fun with this. Um, yeah, just a really good Spider-Man game. Obviously, the new ones are way better. <laughs> but this was really good. I really had a good time at this. Uh, you're fighting the Green Goblin and stuff. It was based on the movie, but this game brought you so much more than the film, basically. So, yeah, they, they had all different enemies and stuff like that, not just the Green Goblin. So I had a good time at this. I really enjoyed Spider-Man. Next up is Spy, Hunt Spy Hunter. I only played bits of this here and there. I think it was more of a... A racing game but you had to shoot things as you were going down the road there i think but i don't remember too much about it i have played it but my memory is very vague of it I, I didn't play much of it put it that way next up is state of emergency i never got round to this one my friend sean who was talking about before he loved this game um i should have really got around to it because it is rockstar but yeah i don't know why it looked like my type of thing at the time and stuff I think it got bad reviews, so I avoided it, but I have picked it up recently. Um, so when I get the PlayStation plugged in and stuff, I, I will play that. Next up is Theme Park World. Uh, I used to love Theme Park on the PlayStation 1. I didn't love this one. I thought it was very messy. I didn't like the graphical style, the 3D graphics on this. I much preferred the 2D style on the PlayStation 1 of Theme Park. This one just didn't work for me, I'm afraid. I don't think it was that good at all, to be honest. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just ignore my finger. I fractured my finger and where. Next up is Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005. They were always good golf games, weren't they? I mean, they were nailed down to perfection, really. I loved everybody's golf as well, but Tiger Woods golf was the best one. Uh, just real good golf sim. And my dad used to play this. This is my dad's, actually. Uh, he bought it, but I got into it as well, so... Next up is Time Splitters. Now, I'm going to be honest, I bought this after playing Time Splitters 2, and I never really played much of this because I played it and thought, this isn't as good as Time Splitters 2, and just went back to Time Splitters 2. Now, I do appreciate this is probably a good game that I should give another chance to, but Time Splitters 2 for me is where it was at. In my top 10 games of all time, easily, probably about 6th or 7th, <laughs> I played this constantly, and. I remember my friend Phil come over, who lived over the road, and we done co-op, and it just opened the game up even more. It was like a new experience, you know, just having fun with my friend there, playing the campaign. I love this game to death. It, it really is 
unbelievable and there were so many good challenges in here and what i used to love like i was really if there's two games in my life that i've been really good at one of them is coming up in a minute and the other one is this there was challenges that you could do and people used to send their scores in to this magazine and they used to put the scores in every month and i think someone done 45 seconds of this level once sorry it was like sorry 59 seconds and i beat it in 45 seconds and i'm so proud of myself and i tried to beat myself and i've done it in 19 seconds <laughs> i mastered it to perfection and only if i knew how to record videos then i could have sent it into the magazine so their record was 50 seconds or 59 seconds and i done it in 19 i was so proud of myself but all these little challenges that came with this game were great i 10 out of 10 amazing game really really is Next up is Splinter Cell. I remember being very jealous of Xbox owners back in the day because they had this, their answer to Metal Gear, really, but everything seemed to come on PlayStation 2 in the end, didn't it? Really good stealth game. I was stuck for the longest time at the very start, and I realised I had to shoot the light out so no one could see me. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't as clever as the games back then, but this is a really good game, game playing as Sam Fisher. They really need to bring a new Splinter Cell out. They really do. Next up is Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. I mainly played this one on the Xbox One. I remember having a really fun time with it. I did actually enjoy it better than Splinter Cell. Um, the story is a bit all over the place, but it was just fun to do these stealth type missions. I'm not a big stealth game fan, to be honest, apart from Metal Gear mainly, because I don't like waiting around, but I still had fun with this, these two Splinter Cell games. Next up is Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. I've heard this is the best one. I haven't played it, I'm afraid. Here we go now into one of my favourite game series of all time. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 in my top five. Like I said earlier, I love these elite sports games and this is perfect. I went out and bought Tony Hawk's 1 and 2 remastered in the hope that if enough people buy them, they will remake this and Tony Hawk's 4. This is unbelievable. I... Was the other game I was talking about with time splitters that I'm very good at is this. I am a very, very good at Tony Hawk's. Um, I used to get so many big combos on this game, like the timer would run out and I'd still go for another 10 minutes, you know, doing me combo and stuff. I mastered this game and I loved it. I never stopped playing it. And when I set my PS2 up not long ago, I mean, I know I haven't got it set up now, but I set it up just for the day to go back to all the games, just the first one I put in. So, I love it to death. I will never part with this. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Now, this is a very good game. I just didn't love it as much as the other one. This is more open world and stuff. Uh, I kind of like the timer on Tony Hawk's 3, really. This was still good. It was it was good change to go in the open world and stuff. I just didn't love it as much as 3, but it's still very, very enjoyable. Um, really, really good game. Next up is Tony Hawk's Underground, another really good game. This is more in the Jackass style era, you know, doing more outrageous stunts and stuff and try to bring a lot more fun to the game instead of being like a, not a sim style game, but a more serious skateboard game. This is definitely going down the silly route, but it worked. I enjoyed it. And next up is Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Now, this one was a bit too much Jackass style for me. They brought Bam Margera and everything into this game. And this one went a little bit too ridiculous for me. I thought it was okay, but I love the other three way better than this. Next up is Twisted Metal Black. Twisted Metal 2 on the PlayStation 1 is one of the best games I've ever played. And I loved this one as well. I actually owned it on my PlayStation 4 and got every trophy, but I was so disappointed that the UK never got the endings to this. So I have to go and watch them on YouTube if I want to see the endings. They all got the same ending. Which is stupid. Why did we get? Why did they leave us out there for the endings after playing this amazing game with these characters? One of the best things about Twisted Metal Two, you complete it and you get a great ending. And this just didn't have that. They were all the same ending, but it was still a great game to play. I just wish we got the ending. This cover is a little bit broken here, but that is True Crime Streets of LA. I only played the demo for this, and I never actually got round to the game. I remember liking it, but I just never really played the game, to be honest. And next up, there's going to be people screaming at the TV screen that I haven't played this one either. And I do plan on downloading this for the PlayStation 5. 
And then it's the Warriors. <laughs> I've heard this is so good. I love the film. And the reason I didn't play this back in the day is because I hadn't seen the Warriors. I have seen it now, so I picked the game up. But just haven't got around to it. And this will be another one of the first that I play. But I'll probably, I'll probably get the remastered PS4 or PS5 version, whichever one I can get, to be honest. Um, but I've heard great things about this. Next up is another game series that I haven't really touched. I've played the second one, I think, but don't remember too much about it. And it's just World Rally Championship, World Rally Championship 2, World Rally Championship 3. I played the second, like I said, but I don't remember too much about these games. Like I said, I was more of an arcade racer, not really a rally or sim game, sim car game type of guy. But... Yeah, I can't say too much about them. And last up, we do have 13. Now, I think they've just brought a remake out of this, but no one really liked it. I heard they got terrible reviews, but this one was so good back in the day. I loved the whole, you know, the graphical style of the cell shading and stuff. And some it's, It had like 34 single player levels, but some of them were like five minutes long. But I really enjoyed this. It was so so good to see the explosions and kaboom popping up on the screen and stuff. I hadn't played anything like this before. But yeah, really, really good shooter. I highly enjoyed this. I hope they, you know, sort out the remake really because I've heard it's terrible. But yeah, that is 13. Some great games on the PlayStation 2 there. Like I said, I have I had way more than this back in the day. But people just borrow things and don't bring them back. So what can you do? I hope you all enjoyed this PlayStation 2 collection and I give you like a little bit of nostalgia there. If you want to check out my other video game collections, they will be down below along with my Blu-ray collection, which I'm going to be doing an update of soon. You know, there's a few other collections in there, like my horror movie collection, stuff like that. So if you enjoyed that and you want to check them out, links will be down below. And if you want to comment about the PlayStation 2 or any of them games I picked or there's, there's some that I should pick up, Leave it down below and I will reply to every single one of you, I promise. Take it all easy, guys. I'll see you all next video.